when you look at, say, an organization like Black Lives Matter, it's pretty clear to me nobody disagrees with the idea that Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. The way I know this is everybody posted the square on social media. <laughs> right. Anybody with any influence in government, media, in corporate America, in anything, anybody you know agrees that Black Lives Matter. But the, but the Black Lives Matter movement is not about Black Lives Mattering. I mean, you can go to the About Us section of their website. It says that one of their goals is to dismantle the, quote, Western prescribed nuclear family. Right. Uh, I don't think that has to do with George Floyd. You yeah. see, they use the words comrade often in here. I mean, this is basic Marxist rhetoric. The founders of Black Lives Matter worked for radical Marxist organizations, which, by the way, were funded by the Open Societies Foundation, which is George Soros's Soros, right. fund. I know now that's considered a conspiracy, but the nice thing about conspiracy now is anything that uh, doesn't fit the narrative. The, the narrative of the media <laughs> that right. day is now a conspiracy. I mean, you yeah. can track that. Non, you can track nonprofit funding. You can see where money comes from. The Open Society Foundation goes right. to this foundation. These people started Black Lives Matter. It's it's very clear. It's become it, it's become not just ideological, but I think for the secular left. You know, they used to refer to Marxism as the God that failed. It was a substitute religion for mm -hmm. people who lost their religion. Mm -hmm. You write about religion quite a lot. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me that beyond the scientific and even beyond the political dimension of the lockdowns, of the riots, we're seeing something that's actually got a religious tone to it. It's because the, the misdiagnosis that conservatism has had yeah. and the American church has had is really what is progressivism. Yeah. And we have treated it because we see it largely manifested in a political party. We have treated it as a political ideology or a political construct. And it is not that. Hmm. Um, those, are, those, those are really the outcomes of what it truly is. It is the, it is, it is the Marcion Arius it is the it is the spirit of this age. It's the Pelagius. It's the heresy of this era. These are for for the people for who are not as familiar. Yes. Yeah, the, yeah. you're talking about some of the the great heretics yes. of all time yes. of the ancient world. Yeah, they'd be in the hall of shame. They would. Right? And, and Arius, they're wing in hell. Basically. Arius is well known in particular because at the Council of Nicaea he got punched, punched in, in the, the face, face by, by Saint, Saint Nicholas. Nicholas. <laughs> right. Every Christmas I put out that gift that says I came to give kids presents and punch heretics in the face and I'm all out of presents. <laughs> right. And and that's what this is. It is this. It's the it has its own ecclesiology. Yeah. Um, the, the government is mm. uh, government is God, not God. Yeah. It has, and the state is the substitute for the church. Mm -hmm. It determines the moral uh, and and life view of the people. Uh, it is it is a, it is the substitute religion of the yeah. era. It, it's the fulfillment of what Chesterton once said, which is that when the government removes the God, the government will become the God. That's right. And that's what and progressivism is is the religious. Uh, manifestation of that urging that ultimately there has to be something mm -hmm. we have we you know it's that blaze pascal we all have that god-shaped hole in the heart yeah something you can't replace something with nothing mm -hmm. if you remove god right you saw this in the french revolution if we're going to ca ca tear down the cathedral of notre dame and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take the 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 clergy in the reign of terror to the guillotine yeah then the goddess of reason will take its place and they did that I and mean, they, during the french revolution that's exactly what they did and that's what's occurring here and the manifestation of reason, that's when they say, I believe in science. Yeah. The science that says there's 57 genders, yeah. right? The science that's been that's wrong on global warming science all that of the time. The science that says a baby's not a baby. That's right. The science that says that what we just discussed with COVID-19. Yeah. And that, because in the end, it's not science, but scientism. Yeah. The idea that science conjures up truth rather than discovers it. And so to today's progressives, Newton basically, if you take what they're saying to its most logical conclusion, we Newton, or gravity didn't exist until the apple fell on Newton's head. Huh. All right, right. So Newton doesn't discover objective truth. Yeah. He conjures he it. it. Yes, right. he 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 speaks it into existence. I I need I desire for this thing to be true. Yeah. So I must come up with a system that gives me that truth. Well, well, and that's what progressivism provides for people. Even this word science, I think, is key here. Right. The word science, for most of its history, has referred to knowledge, to right. all, that's the word, it comes from the Latin word for knowledge. Right. And this trick of modernity is they've taken the word for all knowledge, you know, you, you'd refer to philosophy as science, you'd mm -hmm. refer, and you've truncated it, you've, you've shrunken it down to just refer to one very specific materialist, empirical method of yes. inquiry. Yeah. And that is now being exalted as all of, of human knowledge. And the kind of irony of that, which you point out, is the conclusions are going way beyond the scope of science to the point that now we're saying men can be women and babies aren't babies and it's taken on 
uh, yet again, nature abhors a vacuum, mm-hmm. this religious role. It's, it's how they acquire salvation. Hmm. And, and, and salvation is really, in this case, self-actualization. Hmm. Um, it's, I emote, therefore I am. I want, <laughs> therefore I am. I desire, therefore I am. And I can bend this world yeah. into the desires, urges, and wants that I have. Listen, I, I mean, I, I'm a sinner. That's yeah. why I needed a savior, all right? I deal with temptation and those sorts of things all the time. Uh, but, but the fact that I recognize that indicates that I admit I'm flawed. So that I can't change the world to what I want it to be. To, the modern American left believes that they can. And yeah. if you don't agree, then you'll be made to care. And, they, and, 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 and that's why you also see it's always the groups they claim they're about to save that are always the most punished right. by, by their schemes. Well, that's the irony, right? Yes. But, but the, the way you're talking to me, you're, you're speaking in a very traditional Christian context mm-hmm. about original sin mm-hmm. and mankind has fallen and, you know, there's sin and death pervade the world. Okay, right. I need a redeemer. I need... Right. It does seem like there's an analog in today's left. The analog is in the way they talk about politics, specifically with all these riots. Mm-hmm. They talk about white privilege. It seems to me the white privilege or, you know, the kneeling down and the asking for forgiveness or... The genuflecting. The genuflecting, mm-hmm. I mean, or, or even beyond that into environmentalism, the recycling, the carbon tax credits, right. which really seems to me like a sale of indulgences. Yes, yes. All of that seems to be a, a substitute religion. So then, Or say it may be a counterfeit. Or a counterfeit religion. You could religion. use that word if you'd like to. Yeah. So how should conservative... When, when the left talks... I mean, I, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. I want to think they're actually just sort of ignorant. They know now what they do. When they come to a conservative and say, you have white privilege. I have white privilege. I know it. I feel it in my bones. Mm -hmm. How should conservatives respond knowing that what they feel is an actual religious longing? They're just getting it wrong. I think one of the tactical things that I'm not big in telling us we have to adjust to what the left does. In fact, in fact I think we do that way too often. <laughs> we, do we too do much it. of conservative media is, let's find out what stupidity they say and then just counter it. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to yeah. what's our actual narrative then, yeah. right? I mean, if we ever get rid of their narrative, what narrative do we want instead, mm-hmm. right? But this is one case where I do think we have to react to the reality of the era in which we live. Mm-hmm. In, in previous generations, the conversation that you're asking me about would begin with an, a, a, a debate over which objective truth is true or which person's idea of objective truth is true. And then you would try to close the argument with a personal testimony or story Mm -hmm. to kind of put an emotional seal on that that story. We now live in an era of postmodernism. We don't even agree that there's dueling objective truths, right? So I think we actually have to reverse this discussion. Mm -hmm. I think we have to start with the personal appeal and the testimony. And then once we establish a personal credibility, then we can get to where where this, my, my testimony, confirms that this objective truth exists. Mm. So for example, in my story, I'm a kid born to a 15 year old mom, right? She almost aborted me in January of 1973 when we had this thing called Roe v. Wade and then just decided she couldn't bring herself to do it. 46 years later, she'd tell you, I'm the best mistake she ever made, okay? (laughs) Um, But we were on food stamps, we were on ADC. I I was on reduced lunches in school. I remember kind of, you know, the shame of that. You know, when, when, because yeah, there was different tickets that went along with those kinds of things. I lived with a very abusive stepdad at times growing up as well. Um, I, I once failed the quick trip convenience store managerial exam because I flunked out of college because they don't hand out degrees for majoring in super tech mobile, yeah. apparently, <laughs> yeah. right? And not going to class. And so I tried to get a job as an assistant manager at Quick Trip, a big convenience store chain in the Midwest. I flunked the exam because I couldn't remember how to add and, and subtract and multiply and divide fractions, all right? Now, why do I bring all these things up? Tell me where the white privilege is in any of that. Yeah, right. Where, where, right. where, where did anybody just give me something because I am white. Yeah. W- was it when the government cheese I ate as a kid? Was it the food stamps we were on? Was it the time that I wasn't qualified to run a convenience store? Yeah. W- where did this white privilege come from? And I think we need to be more willing and eager to share our own personal stories and lives with the culture because a lot of our testimonies are gonna undermine their narrative and actually confirm our own. You know, I, this reminds me of Gone with the Wind. It's remind you know, going with the wind just got canceled. <laughs> right. in, in, and HBO. I don't know nothing about birth and no babies. I just want to say that yeah. up front right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. All right. Okay. But you remember going, going with the wind, which got canceled because it depicts uh, the 19th century South, mm-hmm. which is obviously politically incorrect. Mm-hmm. 
Gone with the Wind actually. Or they, by the way, it, they get burned to the ground by Sherman and yeah. suffer through Reconstruction. They're like, <laughs> right. they're penalized for this. Yeah. That's the story, guys. Right. The South they collapses. Didn't the they yes. didn't get to the end. They didn't get to the end. Yes, of it. but okay. But Gone with the Wind, the film, actually played an important role in racial healing in the mm-hmm. United States, right? Mm-hmm. Because you have the first black actress winning an Oscar. Mm-hmm. And during Hattie's acceptance speech, what does she say? She says, does she say, I'm damn right going to win this Oscar and you should have given people like me and Oscar for this years ago. And I, and this is terrible. And you guys are all off. No, she says, I'm just so humbled by this. Thank you. She knew the significance of the moment. The, the woman, pre- the white woman presenting her the award knew the significance right. of the moment and said, I'm so pleased to be able to offer this. That begins with a, a sort of humility. Empathy. And with some empathy. And yeah. yet the politics we're seeing from the left is one that exalts pride. It exalts pride so much that they actually dedicated a whole month to pride, the queen of all sins. Mm-hmm. Now, now some people call it the sin of all queens, but I wouldn't say that <laughs> myself. But it, that's, it, you, you actually just see in a very basic level the substitution of vice for virtue and virtue for vice, right. all, all the way down to the most important one, which is pride. I mean, h- how much of our politics could become sane again? if we just had a little touch of humility and strove a little bit for the virtues? Over eight, about 80% of US of, of Twitter accounts yep. are outside the US. Well, Only about 20% of Twitter accounts are from inside the US. And it's a, and the, it's a fraction of those accounts that have, that have meaningful activity, 500 or more followers. Hmm. And yet, this is the faceless mob that is bullying all the people with the guns. I, we've never seen anything like this in human history where the people with the, with the weapons are the ones getting bullied. Yeah. And it's largely by a faceless mob on a social media platform, 80% of Americans aren't registered to use, all right? Uh. And, but the problem we have though is, to the, to the people that do make these decisions in our culture, it's the city gate, it it's, it's town it hall, yeah. it's where business is done. Yeah. And, and even President Trump has played into this, it's yeah. in that, I understand he needs to use this weapon to counter their narrative and has helped him do that. Yeah. And there's no question about it. But it also then feeds the notion that this is a viable platform for determining what America thinks. Yeah. You mentioned that Gone with the Wind got canceled by Warner Brothers. Yeah. That same day it went to number one on the Amazon movie charts <laughs> right. because Twitter's not America. Yeah. But what Twitter does yeah. is the pridefulness that you speak of, the, the way that, that, that I can instantly emote, instantly react. Yeah. And there's a group of people sitting around waiting to see what my my, what my instincts hot are, take. Yeah, and hot take is on everything, yeah. and how that feeds the pridefulness and the ego, and 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 we lack empathy mm-hmm. for one another. We don't listen to one another because of that. I think it feeds into that. I think it's feed a myopic view of history. Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I'm, listen, I listen. What you and I would think in 2020 about race relations would would probably seem leftist to the people in 1939 that gave Hattie McDaniel an Oscar. <laughs> right, but they right. were in 1939. Yeah. Like we can't look through the benefit of history and give people any benefit of the doubt. Like they're immediately supposed to know what the most ultimate progressive enlightened evolution on every issue was yeah. that we're at right now. But which of course, by the way, if that's your position, how do you know that the progressive evolutionary stance you have today oh, right. won't be looked at as backwards and redneck and hick 10, 15, 20 it, years from now. Actually, by the premises of progressivism, it is guaranteed to, to look right. regressive, evil, right. bigoted, terrible. So you're all, so even yeah. if you're a progressive, you're yeah. even if you're 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 beatified within the church of American progressivism, by to take your position to its most logical conclusion, you're a racist. You yeah. just won't know it maybe for another 20 years, right? And so the idea that we can have no empathy, no benefit of the doubt whatsoever. Yep. You know, in my home state right now, there's a national sports story going on yep. where we, we've got the longest tenured college football coach in the country, Kirk Ferentz. Mm-hmm. All right. He's been there since 1999 and his strength and conditioning coach has been with him the whole time. Yeah. Now, listen, I'm, I'm approaching 50. I, I got a, I'm starting to get a little Grand Torino in me. <laughs> Kirk's 20 years older than me. I'm sure he's got more. Yeah. But we've got now young black players are coming out and saying, hey, you're, I, I'm not comfortable. You're asking me to conform to white culture. I don't even know what that means, but I'll right. listen to their concerns. Right. And I'm, would I be shocked to learn that a football coach that's been on the job since 1999 has developed a little Grand Torino, get off my lawn, and maybe could evolve a little bit? Would you be shocked to learn that? <laughs> Probably, I wouldn't be shocked. Probably not. That's, Probably hum, not. that's human nature, right? Yeah. But now we're literally, we're, we're not, but there's no empathy. Yeah. We're not saying, hey coach, maybe can we have can we have a Twitter account? Can you give us a little bit more freedom? Right. No, it's immediately, you're all racists. So so here's a coach that every winner goes into how many black homes? 
How many young black men have gotten college degrees at a respected public university mm -hmm. and gone on to earn untold riches in the NFL from the University of Iowa program in the last 22 years? Yeah. But, but, but we can't find any distinction at all to say, hey, dude, you got to evolve a little bit. Nope. Immediately, we need an inquiry. You're a racist. The coach needs to be, the strength coach has to be fired. And that yeah. comes from this notion that, that we feed with social media, the pridefulness that I'm, that because I emote, and if you don't affirm those emotions, there must be no reason why you see things differently than me, yeah. than your racist, misogynistic, xenophobic, homophobic bigot. I like using the phrase, he's got a little Gran Torino in him. This idea of, <laughs> get off my lawn now. Yeah. And uh, speaking of Gran Torino and Going with the Wind, speaking of movies, I can't help but notice it's not like you live here in La La Land. No, no. What are you doing in Hollywood? I, I hate to be a cliche again. I'm the Midwestern guy that came out here to make a movie. Yeah. I'm going to probably be an extra in a Guns N' Roses video here in a week. <laughs> but actually, I, I came, we came out here in my 2016 book, A Nefarious Plot, yeah. which is um, which was my homage to C.S. Lewis's uh, Screw Tape Letters, an all-time mm -hmm. classic. Mm -hmm. And I, I wondered what would happen if, if we went next level, if we went Spinal Tap and dialed it up to 11. And so instead of just the temptation of an individual, yeah. what, if, what if we had a demon from hell talk about how he took down an entire culture? Hmm. And, uh, and so the story is, 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 is about a, a demon general from hell named Lord Nefarious, who is tasked by, this, by, by Satan himself to take down the country that's most stood in his way, the United States. And he is now so confident that the plan he has put in motion is irrevocable and irreversible that he's going to write it all in a book, put his name on it, name names. He's going to talk about political figures, historical figures, political institutions, movements that he's co-opted and used and, yeah. and, and that, he has, uh, that he's, he's puppet stringed. Uh, and, and, and he's going to put it all in writing in front of our faces. And the fact that we'll ignore it, we'll think it's a conspiracy theory, it's silly. That's how he will prove to his master, the devil, that the plan was successful. And we're going to turn that into a movie. So I know that Gone with the Wind got canceled. Yeah. This I got news canceled for you. It's, it's canceled. canceled. It's canceled. canceled. It's not yeah. getting made. But I, yeah. I look forward to it uh, when uh, when it's made and when it's released. Probably won't be released anywhere that uh, the gatekeeper is controlled, but maybe we'll be able to burrow into the dark recesses of the internet yes. and be able to see it because it sounds like a great yeah, idea. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a ton of fun. And in the meantime, people can find you on The, uh, Steve the Blaze, Day Show. The Steve Day Show over at The Blaze, uh, blazetv.com as well. Yeah. Excellent. Steve, yeah. thank you for being here. You bet. Appreciate it. Yep. And uh, best of luck with the movie. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. 